Thank you. All right, Christopher, Christopher Lemire. Lemire, I keep saying Lemire. All right, and we have Monica Mendiola by Zoom. Hi, good morning. Good morning, are you able to show your video? Um, I am in a scarecrow costume, so I am not sure. Oh, well, let's not do that, but thank okay. you for letting us know. All right, I know you were not intending on being in court today. All right, we're gonna no. go. Yeah. We're gonna go on the record in 2018 CR 0858 State of Texas versus Christopher Scott Lemire or Lemire. 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 Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Hank Lucas for the state, Your Honor. Defense? Victor Gomez. All right. And are you Mr. Lemire? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. All right. We're here on a motion to enter adjudication of guilt and revoke community supervision. There was some issues. And the issue was regarding what is happening at the rest care facility. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Whether he could stay there or not stay there. Continue his his uh, his attendance there at the group home risk care. All right. Any objections to Miss Mendiola appearing by Zoom? No, Your Honor. No objections, Judge. All right. Any objections to her not showing her video? No, Your Honor. No objections. All right. Does it, does everyone know that this is actually Miss Mendiola? And I'm just saying that so the record can be clear that we know this is who it purports to be since we don't have a video. Your Honor, I have not seen her physically, but I have spoken to her and that voice sounds that that is Miss Mendiola. And she has provided me with a letter to present to the court. So, and uh, when we talked, she's mentioned she would like to show up on Zoom. And I said, that'd be great. All right, Miss Mendiola, can you raise your right hand for me, please? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give would be the truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, ma'am, I do. All right, you can lower your hand if you'll state your name for the record. Monica Mendiola. All right, are there any questions or do we just want to discover what information she has because the court and probation has concerns about what is happening at respite care and whether or not that's a place he should be? Right, I have a few questions for Ms. Mendiola. Judge All right, may. you may proceed. Ms. Mendiola, this is Victor Gomez. Uh, briefly, we spoke yesterday, as you recall. Correct? Yes, Mr. Gomez. Okay. I know you're in the meeting, and, but uh, let me ask you a few questions. Uh, what is your uh, duties and responsibilities there at the rest care facility? Um, as a provider or is in my position? In your position. I am the executive director, so I uh, oversee all lines of business um, that uh, we offer from HDS to ICF. Okay, and under your supervision, do you know a Miss Jones? Yes, Quashita Jones. Right, and what is her position there at Rest Care? She is a qualified intellectual um, disability professional, which we call a QIDP. However, she's been on a leave of absence due to medical reasons for quite some time. So I was really surprised yesterday when you and I spoke and you told me that she was um, attending the hearings or participating via Zoom um, while she's not an active employee with us. She is out again on a leave of absence related to a medical condition. Okay. And as far as refusing a individual to continue to stay at the group home, whose decision would that be? Hers, yours, or a staff it's or board? It's uh, it's something that we call the decision of an IDT, an interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary team meeting. And there's multiple people that are part of that, but ultimate say so, um, I will either approve or disapprove continuing supports or services for somebody. Okay, and last question, Ms. Maniola. Has there been any reports of any violations that have raised your concern about Mr. Lemire? Not recently. I know we did have an issue at one of the homes that he lived at, um, but we were able to move him to another home and he's done really well at the at the new location, which is our Sage Trail home. Okay. And you have provided me a letter indicating that uh, he is still able to return to the rest care. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. 
Uh, no further questions, past witness judge. All right, any questions, state? Uh, so a moment, judge, I'm sorry. questions your honor all right so i have a few questions mm -hmm. there's been an issue with regards to his gps and not being and not charging it mm -hmm. are you aware of that miss mendiola oh no no i was not aware of that that's not something that we as the provider are obligated to be responsible for it's not something that hhsd requires us to manage he would have to manage that on his own well, since he is in your facility or one of the, the group homes, is there any way, because obviously he's there, he has some sort of mental issues as well. Is there a case manager or someone who can go over daily activities with him and just include one of those daily activities? Has he charged the device? Because that's the court's concern. If the device is not going to be charged, then he's a violation of his probation. And we're right back here with him being taken into custody and going to jail for not charging his GPS device. Yeah, so we can do a couple of different things there to support um, him remembering to do this. So we can put some training objectives in place where staff are asking him daily, did he do it? Ultimately, um, he would be the one responsible for plugging it in, but we can do some coaching and some teaching. However, our staff will not be the ones to ensure that he charged it every night. Oh, no, I'm. I just want him to have a reminder because there seems to be an issue, mental health issues and potentially cognitive issues. So if somebody reminds him and says, have you charged it? You need to charge your device today. Whether he charges or not, or not of course, is completely up to him. Mm -hmm. And then if you all remind him and he chooses not to charge it, then we will know where we are. Yeah, we can do that. We can do some in-servicing on our staff as well so they know what it looks like. They know how to prompt him for it. Um, we can also do some data collection just for documentation purposes to see, hey, we asked him. We asked him two times today. We asked him three times today. And then we can document whether he participated or not. Um, that way, if we are ever here again, I can kind of come with some data to say we've done our part as the provider. He's failing to do it. Um, or he's refusing to do it, at least that would give us a baseline. All right. And then the other issue has been his sober support meetings. Is there, are you all able to facilitate that or no? So no, we don't facilitate that. What we do offer is general counseling here at our facility. And I know he was meeting our uh, the counselor, I believe once or twice a month. Um, but not related to NA or AA. I know I spoke to mom yesterday and she said that he typically arranges those himself. All right. So with regards to the sober support meetings, because he does have a substance abuse issue as well. And who knows, once the mental health issues are taken care of, maybe then the underlying substance abuse issues will be taken care of as well. Is there any way that you all can put that as a part of his stay there to remind him that he needs to do his sober meetings as well? Yes, and if we can get the days that those are and the times, we probably can assist with transportation as well. The only thing that worries me is that there's five other individuals in that home as well that require just, you know, just as much attention not related to court issues or legal issues mm -hmm. that, Unfortunately, that will always take precedence. It may be a medical appointment. It may be a, a counseling session at the same time that Chris would have AA or NA. And, and unfortunately, because based off the guidelines that Medicaid requires us to follow, those medical appointments will take precedence. So I don't want the court to think that we're obligated to take him and ensure he makes all of those. But we definitely can be helpful in getting him there as long as we're told um timely of the time date and location of the meeting no no he he just he's going to need a reminder that he has to do that okay and then the other issue is individual counseling so you're saying he has counseling there what is that counseling related to 
Um, I'm not sure what they talk about. I have not. Let me let me see if there's any case notes in the system right now. Christopher may be able to tell you what he talks with. Um, our well, I don't want to. I, I don't want to broach. You know, I don't want to get in regards to HIPAA. I just want to know if that counseling session is it for mental health issues? Is it for medical issues? Is it for substance abuse issues? Mental health. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Well, I just don't know, Judge, and maybe this is for, I, I don't know if we need the witness for this, but it doesn't yeah. sound like, I'm a little concerned when you ask about GPS and Ms. Mandela said, that's not really our responsibility. It seems like maybe this is setting up the defendant for failure. This doesn't seem like the type of support he needs. Um, and then he asked about service support meetings and, and the response was, uh, well, we can for sure remind him about that. And I, I, that just doesn't seem like a type of support that the defendant needs. Um, so I'm concerned about that. Uh, also on page, uh, on the page with the recommendation and the justification of the court summary, um, we're supposed to do 90 and 90. Um, yes. We've got proof of 31 online in the 90 day period. And then there's, there's some talk about some manipulative behaviors in the court summary too. So judge, I just don't want to support, set, set the defendant up for failure here. I, I, the big issues here, are the failure to comply with the GPS, with the, uh, server support meetings, the 90 days. And okay. And I'm aware that um, Ms. Mendiello was called so that everybody could get an idea of what is happening at the facility, but he hasn't entered his pleas yet. Before he entered his plea to the motion to revoke, I wanted everyone to have the knowledge from Ms. Mendiola what is actually happening at the facility. So are there any other questions for her? No, All right, then what we'll do is then we'll move into the motion to revoke because now everybody has their information. I have my information. Probation, is there any information you would need from her? No, you're not. All right. So we're going to um, start with the motion to revoke. Have you all discussed that? No, ma'am. The actual allegations in the motion? Uh, I've discussed it with Daniel. Okay. And then. So does he want to plead in the loser? Well, he failed that one day on the GPS. He's been attending the AA online and the counseling. And uh, Ms. Mendiola, thank you so much for Zooming in. I really do appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. Sure. All right. Are you all ready to proceed? Yes, ma'am. And yes. Ms. Mendiola, if you'll stay online so you'll know what the decision ultimately is. Yes, yes Judge. All right. All right. Court is calling 2018 CR 0858, State of Texas versus Christopher Scott Lemire. Can I have parties announce again for the record for the state? Hank Wilkins for the state, Your Honor. Defense. Victor Gomez. And are you Mr. Lemire? Yes, Your Honor. I'm going to show you what's entitled Motion to Enter Adjudication of Guilt and Revoke Community Supervision. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, Your Honor. Are you the same Christopher Scott Lemire who was placed on deferred adjudication in 2018 CR 0858 for the offense of burglary of a habitation on May 13, 2019 for a period of six years? Is that you? Yes, Your Honor. All right, state. Violated condition number 34 on or about the 19th day of September 2023 in Bear County, Texas. The defendant, Christopher Scott Lemire, did then and there fail to comply with all rules, regulations, and instructions of the GPS program in violation of condition number 34. How do you plead to that, true or not true? I will waive the other violations, Judge. Any objection? No objections, John. All right, did you understand by pleading true to violation of condition 34, the court could find it true, grant the motion, find you guilty, sentence you up to 20 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine? Yes, Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation of condition 34? Yes, Court will find violation of condition 34 true. Is there an agreement with regards to revocation? State, are you asking for revocation? No, ma'am, we're not. So I, I guess we are agreeing on that. We're asking that he be continued, but we are asking uh, that he go to state ISS, the cognitive intervention track. All right, defense. What are you asking? I'm defense. What are you asking? Ask, for? Your Honor, we're respectfully asking that he continue on the rest care uh, group home uh, facility. Uh, he's it's a structured facility, uh, as you heard. Uh, they'll remind him and give him reminders. It's always up to the individual to continue, Judge. But he's doing everything you're asking. One time, he failed, uh, and 
medications and the structure of the program one time out of maybe two two years close to two years uh, i think that we ought to allow him to continue with that uh, ibd uh, group home facility uh, and he's starting to make friends and uh, you know the move again is all right well i will tell you that there was a previous issue and he was admonished about charging gps in october so uh miss mendiola Yes, ma'am. You're still under oath. Can you tell the court what is his day-to-day -day routine at your facility? Yes. So um, it is a regulated, licensed facility uh, monitored by the state of Texas. So we usually get our individuals up at about 6 a.m. We start uh, preparing for the day, and that includes our day program services. So at 6 a.m., he would be prompted to shower, um, pack his lunch, help make breakfast for the other individuals in the home. They kind of do it all together. Then they eat all together as a family. Um, he takes his medications with a delegated staff present to ensure that all medications are taken appropriately as prescribed. Then they would head over to our day program, which is um, located at the core office in the back half of the building. And there they engage in different activities. Um, some outings take place. They do a lot of um, interaction with each other. They do some money management classes, um, just dependent on his skill set and what he's interested in. Art classes are available, yoga, so on and so forth. They get picked up at about 4 p.m. from the day program. And then um, they head home where they then get ready for the evening, which is preparing a uh, dinner getting the house clean, doing any chores that are assigned to them on any given days. Um, and then they get ready for bed. Again, delegated staff monitor medication administration for evening meds, and he's typically in bed by about 9 p.m. All right. So when his GPS monitor was not charged, was he still at the home or was he just missing and nobody knew where he was? He was at the home. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any follow up questions? Uh, Ms. Mendiola, one question. He's prompted to do all the activities, right? He's reminded this is the time you go here and there. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So that's something that could be added that, to prompt them just to tell them, hey, don't forget, charge your GPS. Yeah, so the state of Texas, when they enter for surveys, they do require us to show training objectives, okay. and we have to show that it's based off their ability to follow and um, follow the directives and understand what they're doing. So by us adding that, it would be one of his training objectives. And then there's an ultimate goal in place for it. So we would say something simple like brushing your teeth. Um, we're going to prompt you no more than two times to brush your teeth, and the end result is good oral hygiene. So it has to be something we identify that he needs help with, and then an end goal um, that needs to be accomplished. So we would need to track it into accomplishment. Now, Ms. Mendiola, I've been informed by the mom that she's pro providing a uh, compact recharger for that GPS. Is that something that could be done while he's at the day hab to recharge it? With the, yes, uh, well, so I, I'm not familiar with how ankle monitors work, so I don't know. I'm assuming it needs to be, like, is there a certain time frame he's able to take it off? I don't I don't know the specifications no. of that. Piece. No, he, he, he is not allowed to take the GPS off at all. Okay. So I would say the best bet is probably the home where he's more stationary. The day hab is, um, think of it like school. There's multiple classrooms that he has to go in and out of, different curriculums he has to be a part of. So I'm not sure how successful that will be. There's also 125 five people that come to this facility versus at the home. There's only five other individuals besides him. So my recommendation would be he charge it at home where it's not so busy. Okay. Thank All you, ma'am. All right, anything else? No, no questions, Your Honor. Nothing for me. All right, this is the court's decision. It seems that this is a stable place for him. I don't know, maybe there was a breakdown in communication about what he needs, what would help him, but I don't want to disrupt him from leaving the placement. Now, Mr. Lemire. 
here's the, the issue. You have got to charge that device, period. And it'll probably be best for you just when you finish with your day activities, charge it at night. I think that charger will last for the full day. We are not coming back here again for you not charging a GPS device. Do you understand? I understand. Your you need to make arrangements for your sober meeting. It appears that you know how to do that. They telling me that they're going to remind you to do your sober meetings, which you can do online. They're telling me they're going to remind you uh, to charge your GPS while you're charging your GPS. You could be doing your sober meeting online. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Do not come back here again because your GPS is not being charged or you're not doing your sober meetings. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Do you have a question about anything? How many, how many more sober meetings do I have? Did you, the rest of the 90, right? Well, no, you were supposed to do 90 meetings in 90 days. Okay. So you need to do 90 meetings in 90 days. Okay. You understand? Yes, Your Honor. There are consequences to actions. You understand? Yes, Your Honor. Now, uh, Ms. Mendiola, are you all able to have someone transport him from the Bear County Jail to your facility? Yes. Uh, we usually work with Armando, the forensics person. He'll reach out to us and make sure everything's good um, for us to be able to pick him up. They'll release him to one of our staff members. We have to show identification and all that. All right. I'll let him remain at the facility and he's to be transferred from custody to the facility. No. All right. Is there anything? Yes, Judge. Uh, Mr. Uh, Lemire still has a GPS on. That apparatus, I don't believe, has been recharged. So I'm sure it's discharged by now. So this. Can he recharge it there at the jail before he leaves? Oh, I have no idea. I don't know how that You'll need either. to talk to Deputy Laura and Deputy Mejia. Okay. They are knowledgeable are all things Bear County Jail. <laughs> and if not, he won't be, I mean, until he gets it recharged, I don't know if the signal will go out uh, and he gets transported to the home. That's my concern. I don't want you to be all of a sudden all in violation because it's not reading. That last time they gave me a little bit of time to, do, to get it charged again. Okay. As long as we know and are we looking at release today? Yes, he'll be released uh, today. Okay. Well, when I say today, you probably need to make arrangements because the jail will probably release him at midnight. Yeah, if we can work on that again, I've got five other residents in the home. That would mean that they would have to all wake up to go pick him up. And that's not something we would do. <laughs> so we would need a... Um, Nobody wants to do a field trip. Not at not at midnight. <laughs> All right. All right. So, um, so if we can work something out, I mean, if we can get them no later than 7 p.m., just so then again, our nursing team has to do an assessment on him to make sure that we're noting any injuries. Excuse on him me. Sorry, 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 sorry. You need to slow down. The court reporter has to take down what you're saying. So what were you saying about the release? If we can do it any time before 7 p.m., that will allow our nurse to um, do a physical assessment of him. All right. I'll put Bear County Jail release. Deputy uh, Laura, can we call the jail and see if they can release him today at a decent hour? All right. We can check and see if he can be released this afternoon. Is that doable for you? Yes, ma'am. Yes. If there's a mental health pool and noted in the jail, they will um, only do releases before 1 p.m. Oh, okay. Let's see if we can get him. Let's see if we can do it. All right. Thank you. Jessica, you're always bringing great information to the court. I appreciate that. So we'll see if he can get released today. If not to today, then tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. And um, if you'll facilitate facilitate that, make sure you call them and let them know when he's going to be released. Sure, I'll let him know. Uh, Probation, is there anything else? As long as I get Well, he's starting the 90 days over. Yes. Got it. Got it. 
All right. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Who's here?